Assalamu alaikum and adab my dear students in this video we shall discuss the design of a laterally supported beam so it is a laterally supported steel beam that means the compression flange of the beam has been duly supported and we can take benefit of the maximum bending stress that is 0.66 times fy okay we will go through the steps how stepwise procedure what stepwise procedure we have to follow for for designing a steel beam so initially we should analyze the data what has been provided for the particular uh, for the particular beam so in the data given the type of beam whether it is a simply supported one or a cantilever one then this needs to be uh, provided so accordingly the design will follow span of the beam that is the clear span may be given and accordingly we will find out the effective span of the beam which we will be using which we will be using for calculating the bending moments for the particular beam then support uh, support de details the beam is supported at two ends or at one end the details of the support that is the thickness support thickness must be provided to us what sort of bearing the beam is having over the support that is required then the load the beam is supporting load from the slab so this superimposed load how much super what is the intensity of the superimposed load that is also required yield stress of the steel for which the uh, for which the design will follow which uh, fy value of fy has to be provided as the yield stress of the steel and sometimes a plan may be provided to us the plan of a slab of a room which is being supported by the steel beam that slab say these are the supporting beams over the particular for the particular slab dimensions of the spare this uh, hall may be provided from what we will calculate the center to center distance of the beams this is the steel beam another steel beam another steel beam the center to center distance of the steel beam is required so that we can calculate the load accordingly the load sharing area for a particular beam for a single beam and then ultimately find out the load later on so spacing of the beams or the entire plan giving the details of the room and the beams provided supporting beams provided is required if some data is missing we may assume it suitably say for example the yield stress of steel is not given we may take this yield stuff, uh, stress of steel accordingly and go ahead with our design so in the second step we'll go for load calculations load calculation we have to uh, have the load for which our section should develop the required amount of moment of resistance so load will include various loads it will include the dead load it will also include the superimposed load first we will be calculating the self weight or the dead load self weight or the dead load of the slab it is supporting the slab so we will need to calculate the dead load of the slab itself over the area we have to define the shearing area of that particular beam and we will calculate the self weight of the slab per meter run then second slab will be having certain flooring material over it so we'll, that is also a dead load so we will calculate the self weight of flooring flooring material will have its own weight so that that comes under dead load so this is the self weight of the flooring material then one more dead load is the self weight of the beam itself beam is also going to have certain weight of its own so initially we don't know which section we are going to use so we may appropriately choose 1.0 to 1.2 kN per meter as the self weight of the beam and later on we will be knowing the actual weight when we will select the section then the superimposed load superimposed or live load this intensity must be provided or we will take it suitably from the ice codes for that particular structure the superimposed load in kilonewton per square meter so adding up all these loads we will find out the total udl wt in kilonewton per meter so this will be kilonewton per meter 
the entire load acting on that particular beam for which our design should be valid it should be uh, the beam should be strong enough to resist this much of the load then after we know the load we calculate the bending moment which is developed because of this load the bending moment developed due to the loads acting on the beam that we will be calculating now for bending moment we have bending moment maximum in a beam shall be equal to the total load into effective spans square to the power 2 divided by 8 this is the maximum bending moment which will be acting on a simply supported beam at its center or this bending moment may be equal to the total load into L square divided by 2 which is valid for a cantilever beam where L is the effective span of the beam effective span will depend upon the type of the beam that is for simply supported it will be clear span plus one support thickness that is half on one end half on the other end and for cantilever this shall be L plus the depth of the beam half of that so we'll be calculating the maximum bending moment for that particular beam corresponding to the loads given and the condition of the beam what type of beam it is after calculating the bending moment the next step is the beam should develop a moment of resistance more than or at least equal to the bending moment so we equate the moment of resistance to the bending moment bending moment value we are now having moment of resistance we know is equal to zxx of the beam multiplied by the permissible bending stress and bending moment value we already know now since this is a laterally supported beam sigma bc shall be taken as 0.66 times fy this value is already calculated so this will give us ZXX section modulus required for the particular section to resist the bending moment as calculated. So we will find out ZXX from bending moment divided by this sigma BC. This will give us the section modulus required for that particular section and this will provide us a hint to select a section from the steel table in the next step we select a trial section trial section from the steel table which will have zxx more than or equal to the section modulus required as calculated here so we'll select a section an i section or if it is not sufficing our needs we may provide a built up section We'll select, we'll come up with a certain section and we'll say that this is our trial section 1 which otherwise will have ZXX more than our requirement but it has to be safe in other parameters also. So apart from bending, we'll try and check whether this section is okay, whether this section is fulfilling our requirements for the other design parameters. So we for the shear, we check for shear. First parameter after bending is shear. So we check the section for shear. In this, we have to see whether the shear stress is within limits. So for that shear stress, we calculate maximum shear force. So the unbalanced force, that is shear force, is to be calculated, which we represent by V, so V max, shall be equal to the total load into L by 2 this is the maximum shear at the face of the support we have to calculate it or it shall be W total into L this is valid for a simply supported beam and this one for a cantilever beam so we will be calculating the maximum shear force which is developed because of the loads acting on the particular structure and from that we will calculate the shear stress now will calculate shear average shear stress tau v as v max divided by the area resisting area of the beam is the area of the web that means thickness of the web and the depth h of the web so this will be the shear stress developed in the particular section and this tau v 
shall not exceed the permissible shear stress. This permissible shear stress is 0.4 times F1. So 40% of the yield stress, it should not exceed. If it is exceeding, we'll have to revise the section. If it is okay within our limits, then it is safe in shear. After shear, the other parameter to be calculated, to be checked for is deflection. So we check for deflection. The beam will deflect due to the loads acting on it. So the maximum deflection we will have to see. So that we say delta max. Maximum deflection in a beam because of the loads acting over it is a constant 5 upon 384 W L to the power 4 divided by E into IXX. This is the deflection for a simply supported beam maximum deflection at the center. Where total load we know E is the modulus of elasticity or the Young's modulus. I is the moment of inertia. We, will, we have already selected the section IXX we can get from the steel table. Or this is equal to W L square L to the power 4 divided by E IXX 8 times. This is for cantilever. Maximum deflection will be at the free end and this will be the maximum deflection for that particular beam. Delta max. So after calculating the maximum deflection, we have to see that it should not exceed the permissible values. So we have delta permissible for a steel beam that is equal to L effective span divided by 325. This value is the maximum permissible one for a steel beam and for the beam to be safe, delta max shall not exceed delta permissible. So it shall be less than or at least equal to the permissible value. If it is so, then our beam is okay. We can go ahead with this section for further trials, for further parameters. If not, we will have to revise the section and come up with this condition where delta is within the safe limits. So after checking the deflection, the other parameter is web crippling. So check for web crippling. So web crippling is another parameter where a web has a tendency to cripple under the load or at the bearing area. So this has a tendency say it will cripple, it will bend like this. Under the load, the section may bend like this or at the support where it is subjected to bearing stresses, it may bend, the web may bend like this. So this is called web crippling. So we have to make this structure safe for web crippling also. If I draw the longitudinal section here, this is the beam. These are the flanges. Say this is the support. This is the area of bearing. Say width is A. It is supported for a bearing A. Then this is the distance of the root of fillet. This is the distance of the root of the fillet from the top or from the bottom of the flange. So this distance is called H2. This distance is H2. This is also available in the steel table, this distance. And the distance between these two roots, we identify this as H1. So these parameters H1 and H2 are also available for the particular section. Now, for the web crippling, we have to see that the bearing stress developed here should not exceed the permissible value. So the load dispersion here, this is the load dispersion. This is taken at 30 degrees. Load dispersed at 30 degrees. Then this width over here, this width is now say we represent it by capital B. This width will be A plus this much. So from this triangle, this distance shall be equal to 
h2 by tan of 30 degrees or we shall take it equal to h2 under root of 3. We can take it like this also. So ultimately this b is equal to a plus h2 under root 3. This is the distance b. Okay, now assuming at dispersion being 30 degrees, we have to see that web should not triple so that which is uh, that so that it is safe under crippling or crushing. So, so we calculate the bearing stress at the support. We calculate bearing stress developed that is sigma b, which is equal to load. Load is the reaction, reaction which will lead to the bearing stress or that is the shear acting at the section at the support are divided by the area resisting. The area resisting is the thickness of the web multiplied by this B. B is A plus H2 under root 3. This will, create, uh, this will give us the bearing stress developed which will ultimately lead to the web crippling if excessive. And we have sigma B permissible. Permissible is 75% of Fy or 0.75 times the yield stress of the steel and our condition sigma B shall not exceed sigma permissible it can be less or at least equal to that at the most equal to the bearing stress permissible then it is safe in web crippling or web crushing otherwise it will fail. So next check is another check what we call web buckling. Web has a tendency to buckle. Since the thickness of the web is too less, it has a tendency to buckle and we have to see that it is safe in buckling. Say for example, the beam is like this. It will have a tendency to buckle and buckle like this. It will form, the web will be formed like this. So it will bend or it will buckle this way or it may buckle other way round say this is the beam before buckling if it buckles it may buckle like this it may be it will look like this so this is buckling so we have to make it safe against buckling also for buckling our load dispersion is 45 degrees we take dispersion of load this is the center of the beam the dispersion of the load is now 45 degrees so we'll have to see this distance now now this is b this b will be now equal to a plus This distance will be h by 2 where h is the overall depth of the beam. Okay, now for web buckling we will have to see the load carrying capacity. Load carrying capacity of the web say identified by P. This load carrying capacity shall not be less than this P shall not be less than the reaction. This P shall further be equal to some area, area of the resisting area multiplied by sigma AC, axial compression stress permissible in axial compression. Now this A shall be given by thickness of the web multiplied by this distance. This distance is A plus H or D by 2. This is the area resisting multiplied by sigma AC. The sigma AC will have to take from the steel, from the IS code, this will be taken from IS code, IS code table corresponding to lambda. This table gives a sigma AC corresponding to lambda. This lambda is taken for the this for the ratio H1 H1 now. This distance H1 under root 3 divided by thickness of the web TW. For this particular ratio, we'll take lambda. From lambda, we'll go to the table. For particular value of Fy, we'll calculate sigma AC and hence the load carrying capacity of the web. 
for the structure to be safe in web buckling this load carrying capacity should be greater than or equal to the end reaction or the shear acting at the end that is r then it will be safe in but this uh, for against the buckling so if it is safe then it's okay the section which we have selected which came out to be safe in shearing in uh, web deflection in crippling then buckling then that section can be used as a steel beam for that particular condition if not we'll have to revise the section so if we summarize for the design of a steel beam we should first know the type of the beam which we are going to design the data given has to be analyzed load import is important or the plan is important the plan must be given for which uh, the beams are supporting a particular slab what should be the spacing of the beams what is provided and what is the load sharing of the particular beams we calculate the load we sum up the dead load from the slab from the self rate of the slab the uh, weight of the flooring self rate of the beam itself and superimposed load we calculate bending moment accordingly bending moment is to be equated to moment of resistance moment of resistance when equated we will get zx required from that zx value we go to the steel table and select a trial section which we are going to analyze further so that, that, that section is giving us sufficient zx uh, section modulus but other parameters are to be checked other parameter first is shear shear it has to be safe in shear shear stress shall not exceed 40% of fy then deflection that should not exceed the permissible value that is l upon 325 then we have to go for web crippling where we have to check that bearing stress is not exceeding the limits and web buckling where we have to check that the load carrying capacity of the web is not exceeding the reaction or the shear acting at the particular section only that section can be selected as the particular for the particular conditions to be act as a steel beam thank you